the second question you have no idea, third question no idea, fourth question you don't know what you're doing there, don't start questioning your whole existence. Just keep going. You may fail a bunch of questions still pass the exam. You need to know that. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Today, I'm going to tell you my experience with the CCNA 200 301. As I promised in my last video, where I gave you the list of countries that cannot take the CCNA online, I took the CCNA online for you. And the goal was to check the questions and make sure if you have lab questions or not. And I'm going to cover four sections in this video. First of all, I'm going to show you how you can schedule your exam on Pearson View's website. And second, I'm going to tell you my bad experience in taking the CCNA. I'll tell you why it was bad. And third, I'll give you the types of questions that I found at the exam. And I'm going to finish by giving you some tips and tricks that you can apply to your preparation and while you are taking the exam so you can make sure that you maximize the chance of success at that exam because as you know it's not an easy exam you need to be well prepared you need to have some strategy when you are working through the questions so you make sure that you get it right all right so first thing if you want to schedule your exam you need to go on pearson views website i have the website linked in the description once you are on the website you need to scroll down where it says scale the exam and click on there so you go under the c letter and you choose cisco systems on the next page you're supposed to log in in your cisco account with pearson view if you have an account you can just go ahead and log in if you don't have an account here you can sign up for a new account once you go in you'll have to check all these terms and conditions and then move forward to the page where you can plug in your information your personal information yeah so that's uh, an easy step you can create an account but me i already have an account let me just go ahead and log in once I log in, I'm on this dashboard here where I can schedule my exam and see any other exam that I have scheduled. So we are here for a new exam. I'm going to click on view exam. And here I need to type the code of the exam that I'm trying to take, which is the 200-301. And then we have the CCNA popping up here. I'm just going to click on it. And after that, we have two options. Do we want to go on site for it or we want to take it online with on view? Of course, we are here to take it online. Then I will select that and go to the next page. And by the way, if you want to prepare for the Cisco CCNA 200 301, one of the best courses that I know is mine. It's on kbtrainings.com. I do it from zero to engineer. I go really deep in all the concepts that you need to know. You don't need to use dumps. You don't need to memorize questions. You just need to have the knowledge so that the exam will be easy for you. If you have any questions, send me an email, but go check out the course on kbtrainings.com. So on the next page, we have these different sections here talking about the system check, where you can check your system and make sure it's compatible with the exam and ready for it. Beside that, you have some details on the room or the space that you can use to take the exam what's supposed to happen there and then they're giving you details on your id that you can use you can use your driver's license or your your passport depending on the country where you are and the last section will show you some more details on what to expect the day of the exam and the day of the exam you're supposed to be online at least 30 minutes before the beginning of the exam because you have to do a couple things including uploading your id and taking some pictures of the room where you're supposed to take your exam so let's go ahead and try the system check here once we click there we have some terms that we need to accept here we are confirming that we are going to take the exam on this very same computer with the very same connection that we're currently testing with and next we have this access code that we can copy because we're going to use it later and next to it we can download the on view application on this computer so once you execute the on view application you're going to plug in the access code that you were given earlier and click next as you can see here i can test my microphone my speakers and my webcam everything is working fine i'm going to go next here i'm going to test my internet connection it's going to take a while and yep everything is good i'm going to go next now it's going to download the exam file as if i'm taking the exam so it's going to download it on your computer and we have a section here that is going to show you the applications on your computer that you need to close in my case I have Safari and Google Chrome that I have to close. Once I close it and I test again, you can see there is nothing to show. So I can go next and try to take my test. It's just a simulation of the test. You don't take the actual test. You just answer a single question and you're good to go. Here we have to choose the language. You can take it in English or in Japanese. We can choose Japanese here and go next. Oh, I'm kidding, unless you speak Japanese. But we're going to go with English and next. And the following two pages, it's just some terms and conditions that you need 
to accept before going next and select the language of your proctor. The proctor is the person that is going to be on the other end and they will have a video feed and an audio feed of you. So they'll be able to be there and make sure you are abiding to all the conditions and your exam goes well. If you have any questions, if you need any help, you can go ahead and contact them. And after that, you need to select your time zone. I'm in Denver, which is good. If you have a wrong time zone here, you can just come here and type in the name of your city. It's going to give you your time zone. And next, I need to select the day of the exam. I took it on August 14. And once I select the day, I can see the time that's available here. So first of all, I went for 6.30. By the way, at the end, when I got to the payment page and I made my payment, I had an error telling me that 6.30 was not available. So it happened like twice. And finally, I chose 9.15. That was the only time available. So I paid for 9.15. And after that, you go to the last page, which is the payment page. Here we can see the exam that I'm taking today, the duration of the exam and the amount, which is $300. And I can go ahead and insert my debit or credit card to book this exam. Once it's done, I'm going to click on submit order and that's it. So now I'm going to tell you about my bad experience on that day because it was supposed to happen at 9.15. I was online at 8.45. So you have two options to upload your documents. You can either download the mobile application on your phone or you can scan a QR code that's going to bring you to a web application where you can upload a document, including your ID front and back and you need to show all the angles of the room where you're going to take the exam the front the back the left and the right so you upload all of that and after that you will be in the queue waiting for a proctor so what happened to me was that many people were online to do the exam i was like the 135th in the queue by the way all of this has been on my instagram if you follow me on instagram you know what i'm talking about here because i was there and i made a reel about this so make sure you follow me on facebook and instagram so we can connect i was 135th in the queue and i waited for about an hour until i was the first in the queue and then i waited for like 15 minutes there was nobody there to take care of me and my connection just dropped and then i came back in the queue I was 115th I think and it took me a while again to get all the way to the beginning of the queue and I still couldn't get anybody so I was just so tired because it was already like 11 p.m. and I had to drop everything I just closed everything and I went to bed to sleep then I received the call from someone at Pearson View but then I went back and I lost him again so I had to stay there a while without anybody and I had to restart the whole thing again being in the queue I couldn't do that so I went on the help option I think there was a help option on that page I was able to get in touch with uh, someone in their team after waiting for like 20 minutes i could chat with somebody he was able to schedule my exam i told him i don't want to take it today anymore just schedule it for another day because it's too late it was already like 1 a.m so he scheduled it for the following tuesday i took my exam on tuesday and i was like fifth in the queue and after a moment someone took care of me and i was able to finally get to my exam and answer all the questions okay so what are the types of questions that i found at the exam first of all lab questions no i didn't see any any lab questions at the exam and when I went back to the blog and I read carefully through the comments Cisco is saying that we need to be ready for the lab exams but it didn't tell when it's going to take effect so right now it hasn't taken effect yet so you will not have and I've seen some comments on the YouTube channel from some people that have taken the exam lately so there's no lab questions right now it's still the same old types of questions that we had multiple choice questions where you can have a single good answer or two good answers by the way I have this video that I made last year in October 2021 when I took the test for you again so go and check out that video pretty much the same content but I think I'll go a little deeper in that one and you have some drag and drop questions uh, yeah that's pretty much it those multiple choice questions they can be of any kind you can have a bunch of configurations and you need to choose which one is the best you can have some definitions some compare and contrast and all of that so it's still the same format of the exam that I took last time some of those questions were a little upsetting because I remember a specific question where they gave me a topology up there and then I had a bunch of configurations to pick from it was just too hard to see the configuration and the topology at the same time because for me to see which configuration is the correct one I had to go back all the way to the top look at the topology and then scroll down to compare all the different configurations I think that was not the most efficient way to to, to take that question I think Cisco need to update the the dashboard itself or the exam uh, format because I think it's been that same old one since the 90s they need to make it a little modern and you know user-friendly because right now it was just uh, a pain 
again to scroll up and down trying to catch the error in those different configurations but yeah and they, they all look the same like you need to be very careful when you're taking it you have just some small things that make the whole difference and i'm going to finish by giving you some tips and tricks when you are taking your exam first of all and the biggest of all the tips is to study you need to study well you need to study hard nothing is easy the exam is a complex exam unless you want to memorize all the dumps that exist out there but if you want to be a good engineer you need to put your time into studying you need to study well with good material including my ccna course on kbtrains.com but of course you don't only have to have my course you need to have many courses you need to watch a lot of youtube videos you need to be really involved into it like crazy you don't just fly over things and expect to do good at the exam if you are not well prepared, you are not going to pass this exam. You need to do a lot of lab, a lot of lab. Because as I told you, you have many configurations that pretty much look the same. You need to have done it for a long time and many times to know exactly which one is the correct configuration to plug into the device. All kinds of questions that came, but particularly I saw a lot of questions on the routing table. Almost 10 or 15 questions talking about the routing table. You need to know how to read the routing table and you need to know how the router is going to make the forwarding decision. They're going to give you the destination subnet or destination host and you can see the routing table and you need to pick or say which of the routing table's entries is going to be used to forward the traffic. And there's pretty much two things that you need to know. First of all, the router is going to go with the most specific route. So if you have a slash 25 and a slash 27, the router is going to pick the slash 27. And second, it's going to take the route with the least administrative distance. So if you have um, a static route, which is one, and you have ERGRP, for example, the static route is going to be the one that's going to be preferred. Those are things that you learn when you are studying and you won't have any problem. Of course, compare and contrast radius and TACACs. Compare and contrast the traditional deployment of a network and the central deployment or central management. You need to know DHCP, DNS, NAT. You need to know how to configure that. I had a lot of questions with different NAT configurations and you need to pick the correct one. OSPF priority, how to make a device, a DR or a BDR. All of that, you need to know it. That's the content of the exam blueprint. So if you've been studying well, you will not have any problem at the exam. Second thing, you need to be quick when you are taking the exam. You have 120 minutes with about 101 questions. You may not have enough time to respond to all the questions. You need to be very quick when you are working through the exam. If there is a question where you are not sure or you think you're wasting your time, just skip it. Go to the next question and keep going. You need to do at least all the questions by the end of the time so that you maximize at least the chance to, to pass the exam. And that will come if you've done a lot of labs. If you've done your part really well, you're going to be quick at the exam and nothing will be as hard. The last thing is not to get discouraged. When you start the exam, sometimes you may feel a lot of pressure. You can feel like you're failing the exam. The exam has a total of a thousand points. And to pass the exam, you need to have, it depends, you need to have between 720 and 800 or something and still pass the exam so when you start you may get the first question right you are so sure of it the second question you have no idea third question no idea fourth question you don't know what you're doing there so don't start questioning your whole existence just keep going you may fail a bunch of questions still pass the exam you need to know that so don't get discouraged a lot of people just freak out and they lose the whole control over the exam you need to be in the mood and still going even if you are failing at the end because they will show you at the end how you did in all the different areas of the exam so make sure you do all the questions and you do your best all right, guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this, like it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you have any question or comment, leave it in the comment. I'd be glad to respond. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and bye.